Your Excellency, uh, Secretary General uh, Rasmussen, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, today I stand before you to pay tribute to the impregnable spirit of the last stronghold of democracy and the fight against terrorism in Afghanistan. For the past 21 months, the courageous men and women of Afghanistan under the banner of the National Resistance Front have valiantly battled without international support, persevering against all odds. As the Republic of Afghanistan fell in 2021, NATO forces withdrew, and the whole political class, except for a few, fled and abandoned the nation to its fate. A group of valiant souls chose to remain and carry on the struggle for freedom, justice, and democracy. In the bleakest hour of Afghanistan on that fateful day of August 15th, 2021, when the ashes of a crumbling democracy obscured the horizon, a phoenix of freedom soared above the desolation. Ahmad Masood, the son of the late Commander Ahmad Shah Masood, the legendary Lion of Panjshir, who was assassinated two days prior to September 11, 2001, by Al Qaeda, bravely declined offers of safe passage from foreign governments, including President Macron of France. A young, clean, and educated figure, he stood apart from the political establishment that had governed Afghanistan for the past two decades, untouched by the corruption, decadence, and failures that tarnished the reputation of other politicians, Commander Massoud chose to embrace the risks and challenges of leading the fight for freedom, democracy, and the eradication of terrorism, oppression, and extremism. As his helicopter landed in the Pengshir Valley on that momentous day, thousands of Afghanistan's armed forces rallied to a side, giving birth to the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan. Since then, these valiant defenders of democracy have waged a fierce battle against more than 21 terrorist groups, fighting not only for the freedom and democracy of their homeland, but also for the security of the entire world. This resistance represents not just Afghanistan's struggle for freedom, but also a continuation of the global war on terror that started in 2001. The departure of NATO forces from Afghanistan in August 2021 did not signify the conclusion of this crucial fight. Instead, it placed the responsibility in the hands of those who refused to abandon their homeland. The NRF has taken up the mantle, standing resolute against the forces of darkness and terror that pose a threat to the world. Today, we bring a message of hope and peace but we must also issue a strong warning about the dangers and threats posed by global jihadism and terrorism, which once again has taken up sanctuary in the heart of Afghanistan, endangering global security and the very fabric of our shared humanity. The international community must acknowledge the utmost significance of this resistance in safeguarding the cherished values of freedom, democracy, and human dignity not just for the people of Afghanistan, but for all of humanity. Without further ado, I am deeply honored to introduce the leader of the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, who embodies the courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment to freedom, His Excellency Ahmad Masood. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates and esteemed guests, I stand before you today at this esteemed Copenhagen summit for democracy to share the harrowing situation unfolding in our beloved country, Afghanistan. The challenges we face are immense, and I'm here to call upon the democratic world to join us in our struggle for freedom, human rights, and democracy. Afghanistan, a land of rich cultural heritage and diversity is being torn apart by the Taliban terrorist organization. Our country, with its unique blend of ethnic minorities, which no ethnic groups constitute a majority in Afghanistan, now faces the horrifying reality of ethnic and gender apartheid. The Taliban, through their exclusionary policies, targeted killings, ethnic cleansing, and ethnocide aimed to obliterate our nation's diversity 
and impose their extremist ideology upon the people of Afghanistan. The oppression of women in Afghanistan, unfortunately, has reached unprecedented levels. The Taliban are systematically stripping one of a woman of their basic and fundamental human rights, preventing them from participating in public life and condemning them to a life of servitude. They are denied access to education, health care, and even to freedom to move outside without a male guardian. This is a grave violation of their dignity and basic rights as human beings and a direct assault on our society and their values. Also, the security situation in Afghanistan also has taken a turn for the worse, unfortunately. With the return of the Taliban to power, our country has become a sanctuary for international and regional terrorist groups. Thousands of terrorists have flooded into Afghanistan, posing a significant threat to the people of Afghanistan, to the region, and to the world. More than 21 terrorist groups are now operating within our border, and all of them, even to some extent, in some cases, ISKP, are aligned with the Taliban, and the Taliban are deliberately strengthening them. The Taliban are not only offering these groups safe haven, but are also actively helping them with purchasing weapons, with training and recruitment. Also Taliban providing them with opportunity to acquire what was left, the equipment and ammunition and weapons which was left by the NATO forces. Both Taliban and ISIS are radical extremist groups that pose a grave threat to our values and way of life. The Taliban will never genuinely fight against the terrorism and extremism as it is the source of their own legitimacy and it is their legacy. ISIS and the Taliban are two sides of the same coin. To some group which are trying to whitewash the Taliban, I always call upon them to tell me the differences between the Taliban and the ISIS. Their ideology, their tactic, their brutality, and the way of governance is the same. In the face of these daunting challenges, the National Resistance Front stands as the last democratic force within Afghanistan. We are committed to fighting for a democratic, pluralistic society where all citizens can enjoy equal rights regardless of their gender, ethnicity, or religious views. We embrace Afghanistan's diversity and we are determined to strengthen it by decentralizing power and allowing shared governance among all ethnic groups in Afghanistan. We call upon the democratic world to support the people of Afghanistan in their aspiration for freedom and democracy. Unfortunately, in Afghanistan in the past two years, after the collapse of Kabul and the rise of the Taliban, we have been left with no choice but to defend our people, our children, our homeland and our values. The Taliban left us, the Taliban left us with no choice and the military resistance was the only and the last resort that we had no choice but to actually defend our people and our children. At the same time, we are working to build a consensus among opposition forces to create a viable political alternative to this current situation. We are thankful to Euro for hosting our latest conference in Vienna last month and for giving us the space to strategize and unite. We encourage all democratic forces and all democratic countries across the globe to support and assist us. As our victory in Afghanistan will pave the way for success elsewhere. A world united against tyranny and oppression can make a difference. Our struggle is not just our own. It is a part for a broader battle against extremism and the erosion of democracies across the world. When we prevail, we send a powerful message 
that the forces of darkness cannot extinguish the light of freedom and democracy. In closing, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers of the Copenhagen Summit for Democracy, former Prime Minister Rasmussen and the Kingdom of Denmark, for providing this invaluable platform. It is through gatherings like these that we can come together, share our experiences and build a stronger, more united front against the forces that threaten our shared democratic values. Let us stand together, unified in our pursuit for freedom. Thank you very much. God bless you all.